Hello and welcome to a new Blender Developer sneak peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I present you in this episode amazing improvements in the viewport, the Cycles render engine, Blender player and the node editor. All of those found its way into the soon to be released Blender version 2.76 and if you'd like to support me and make sure that more videos are created more frequently then use the Amazon link in the video description to buy my German Blender book or buy other stuff from Amazon with the link. But now I wish you a lot of fun and joy with the following sneak peek. So let's start with the VSE and the new text effect strip. And the text effect strip is hiding under the effect strip and then text. And it's shown like this in green. And let's just um, animate this so you can see a bit what is possible with this text. So you see there is position changing, there is uh, the size of the text changing, and there is a drop shadow that you can't see in this speed, so I'll show it a bit in a sec. But let me just uh, first of all switch to more text, because I'd like to enter here just any text you like. And when we... Um, when we move this text a bit to the upper position and then zoom in it, then you see that there is a small drop shadow here. And this drop shadow is um, enabled via this checkbox here, shadow, and the position, as you have seen now, is changed by animating or entering different values in the X and Y position, uh, the Y um, box here. And now the only, maybe the only weird thing that you see is here the align X and align Y. And let us just do the following, reset everything to zero. And then it's pretty easy to understand because we align the text now to the left side and align it in vertical direction to the bottom. And that means that when you have zero, zero, that you're at the lower left part of your image. And when you would align the Y position to the center line of your text, then, as you may have guessed already, the text is hiding at the zero position of the Y uh, axis, is hiding um, in half of the, of the clipped image border here, because when you are when this is the center line then it's clear that when you are at zero position and you say my center line is at zero position that your text is then um, hidden behind this border so be uh, be aware that when you select here center and center then that your text is at zero zero really outside of your view but uh, just play around with this a bit and everything gets clear so I'll uh, let this up to you. The size is just changing the size of the text. And as you can see here, it's only changeable in, in, um, full in uh, integers. So size is 70 and 71 and so on. So when you animate that, like here in and different sizes, let me just select that and scroll to the um, graphs here, then you see that this is a, um, a bit like w when you select this and w and select constant, the constant, uh, the, the uh, constant mode, interpolation mode constant. And this is not changeable at the moment, but I'm sure that we'll change that to um, to allow your uh, entering fractions in this uh, box here. So that is the size change. And then there is a wrap width uh, box. And this wrap width does the following. When you are increasing it, then you see it immediately. It's wrapping the text at this um, this position so that every text is flowing in this virtual box now. So that's wrap with and the last one is export subtitles and export subtitles titles is uh, creating a sub rip file. 
And subrib is a software program, but it's also a file format. It's a subrib text file format. And it's pretty easy as you can see here when you when we click that now and select the temp folder to make that easy then you see that this text strip uh, file has been created and when i uh, open that then there is exactly as in the specification this uh, subtitles file and with this file you can um, then go to YouTube and import this file into any video that you'd like to sub to have subtitles to and then all those subtitles are appearing in your video. Apart from that a small but nevertheless very important change has been made and that is that markers are now um, are now moved when accordingly when you um, re remove the gaps. So let me just show it to you with this text strip. So I, I, I erase this text strip, then I cut this um, this image, this underlying image as well, so, so that we have a gap here. And if you'd like to remove this gap now, then you would just um, say remove gaps. That's under, um, that's uh, reachable with backspace, so I'll do that with a backspace, and then you see that this gap is closed. So previously, when you had a marker that is uh, at this position, a marker, you, enter mar you uh, insert markers with M, and you can rename them, them with Control and M. So the marker would be text strip different sizes. And okay, that would be the mark marker. And previously, when you would uh, um, remove these gaps now via backspace, then this marker would stay here still. So in the new version, everything is done as it should have been done in the first time, I, th I uh, think, because uh, your markers are always staying in sync with your strips now. When you have selected lock markers or where is this log markers here? Log markers. Then those markers are not touched. So make sure that you ha don't have log markers enabled here. The file browser really had a big update because it was rewritten under the hood and it's really fast now. So uh, let me just show it with an text, a text uh, object first. Just uh, add a text object and then open the browser here and go to the uh, preview display mode and as you can see now there was uh, practically no loading time and there are so many cool new features and the first thing that is really amazing is that you have a new combo box here and with this combo box there is now a recursion level that you can set and this recursion level says that it, it gets one, one level deep into every one of this directory of those directories and uh, lists every uh, content that is one level down in these directories down here and so without any more words just let it look at how it is displaying it so all those um, all those folders were in the first folder that you've seen just a second before and all those files are inside the folders so that's amazing because now you can very fast um, go down several folders at the same time and look at all those files that are in there so that's really cool and as you can see the loading is has really sped, speed up um, so that is amazing too the next thing is let me just switch back to none. The next thing is that you can um, navigate via the um, keyboard now, as you can see here. Up and down are working, left and right as well. Shift is marking several items and uh, enter is going into one folder. Backspace is uh, back from one folder. 
And just to make sure that you believe me when I say that this is now working for not only for this um, uh, text and font uh, selection method, but it's also working for every uh, texture in there. Let me just insert an image texture and try this with it. So as before, just enter three levels down the tree, go to preview and watch all those amazing previews and placing fast, as I said. So this is everything for the um, selection of simple things like textures and uh, fonts and so on. But there is a really impressive update in the uh, library appending, so file appending that you have here, um, link and append. So therefore I have to load a new file and be back in a second. So let's assume that we'd like to append now from a file via uh, file and append. So just hit shift F1 and you are there. So this is mostly known and it's nothing that would get me completely excited by, but now there is the cool new stuff. Just let us say that we'd like to have this a file and that is exactly like you would do it previously. You would click on the file, then select every item you would like to have in this file and so on, but not anymore. Just hit this, uh, just click on that, that combo box, then say plant file and everything that is in this plant file is listed. And that is already amazingly cool, I think. And I'm using this since it was added extensively. But there are those sort options that make the selection uh, really much more easy. And then when you are completely um, excited, then there is this filter. And with this filter, you can then say, oh, I'd like to have cameras and grease pencil and everything that is a brush and texture. And then everything that is in the blend file and fits your selection is added to this list. And you can so, uh, as easy as before select it and append it. And to uh, make this feature even more awesome, there is a feature like before, uh, like with the one level, two level and three level in the image selection uh, file browser before. And that is when we are in this folder and every folder is now um, containing a Blender file, then I could just say, oh, I'd like to have one level deep every Blender file analyzed and every, every uh, mesh, every brush, everything that is in this file um, will get listed according to your selection here. And you can, as easy as before, select all those, not when, it, when they are named like this, that's pretty bad behavior, but um, uh, you could really easy, easily select now everything you like and filter everything, everything you like. And that is really amazing. Thanks, Bastian Montagne for that. Let's now have a look at Freestyle because Freestyle got five new modifiers. And as always, you find those modifiers under the different options here, thickness, geometry, alpha color and uh, texture, oh no, texture not, geometry, thickness, alpha and color, and they're under add modifiers. And namely those are the tangent. Tangent is found under the thickness, for example, tangent or color, tangent. And then the noise modifier found as well under the uh, add modifier tab. Then the grease angle modifier that is found here, the curvature 3D as you see here, and ge under geometry, the simplification modifier there. And what those d are doing, um, I'd like to show you as well. And beforehand, I'd like to render just a simple uh, scene with the default freestyle uh, setting. And that is this scene with such a rim drawn by freestyle 
uh, such a rim here drawn uh, around Suzanne. And now let's enable the first one that's the simplification and simplification is really simple because when I increase the tolerance here then you see immediately what it does because it simplifies this object and when I increase it even more then you see it even better it simplifies the strokes around the object and that leads to abstract art so it's very easy now to create abstract art with Blender. Just do it. And um, then I'd like to show you the Tangent modifier. That's a bit weird at first. That was a bit weird at first. The Tangent modifier is, as I understood it now, is doing the following. Let me do a max thickness of... 25 is doing the following it uh, follows the pen when it draws and it calculates the direction the pen is just heading and based on this direction it's um, increasing or decreasing the thickness or when you have enter, uh, added it here where was it the tangent there then uh, it would alt alter the color as well but that's based on the on the direction of the pen so that's the tangent then there is the noise modifier noise is pretty easy to explain just it's just noise so when you render it you see it immediately it's um, making the stroke irregular then there is the crease angle crease angle is doing something like that's a bit hard to explain maybe I could just show you in the reference in the um, in the blender reference what it is doing it's calculating how two adjacent uh, faces are uh, meeting and when they meet at a very uh, steep angle like here then it's drawing a thicker line and when it's not as steep then it's drawing almost no line at the meeting point so as you can see here it's a thicker line and there is almost no line so that is the uh, crease angle the curvature 3d is missing i think so let us just add the curvature 3d here and see what that does this modifier is based on the radial curvatures of the mesh object and it analyzes how the uh, how quickly the curve turns the curve of your uh, mesh surface turns and uh, draws the outline accordingly and the freestyle lines so that is everything for the um, for the freestyle section and now i'd like to uh, show you a small blender internal addition that is really cool too and then we're done with the sneak peek again yeah our good old blender internal no it's not that it's um, still receiving updates and this one is in particular very cool and that's the particle info node for the uh, for the blender internal renderer when you are working with particle systems and to illustrate what that does i prepared a really simple scene with this um, sphere that is emitting this sphere this sphere so there is a, par a particle system here with um, render and display let me just scroll to this day um, with the render setting here that is using this icosphere and this icosphere got a material that is the clue so what this does is nothing else as just emitting those icospheres and let me just stop at this position because there are some uh, particles disappearing at this position and then we have a small look at the materials so there is this Splendor internal node material here. This one is a white material without any specular. 
now without any specular. And this one is a red material without any specular too. And when we now um, look at the particle info node, then you see that there is um, that there are different outputs like the index, the age, the lifetime, location, size, velocity, and angular velocity. And when you have the age of the particle that is just emitted and the complete lifetime, and you divide those two, then there is a value coming out of this connection from zero to one. And that is exactly what we need to feed into our color ramp, color ramp. And this color ramp is then mixing those two materials together to blend smoothly from white to red. So let us just see it in the material view and then it's immediately clear what that does. They are white at the start, then uh, they are fading out just after they became red. S and if you render that, if you believe me for sure, then you see it's even doing it in the renderer. So that is really cool. We have that for cycles and now I'm really excited to see your experiments with this. And this concludes the developer sneak peek already. I hope that you had fun watching and learning new stuff. And I hope to see you on my Google Plus, YouTube and Twitter page. Please share it to make the new features well known. And now, happy planning. Bye.